Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Curse of Oak Island. The team hits the ground running, uncovering multiple ancient coins. The Curse of Oak Island team wasted no time at all on last night's season 11 premiere, unearthing a tranche of buried treasure in the form of ancient coins. In what might be one of their best days ever, the Oak Island team uncovered not one, not two, but four historical coins on the western side of the island, and they may have found a fifth in the sea of the northern coast. Rick Legina and metal detectorist Gary Drayton started hunting on Lot 5, and they soon uncovered an ancient-looking coin. The pair were super excited because it looked very similar to the half-Roman coin found last year in the same area. That half-coin featured a distinctly Roman design and was dated between 300 BC and 600 AD, and was found a mere 30 yards from the new coin. A short time later, Gary and Rick uncovered yet another old coin. They drafted in the help of Marty Lagina and Craig Tester, and very soon they had another two coins. Oak Island archaeologists confirmed coins were ancient to medieval in origin. Three of the artifacts were handed over to archaeologist Emma Culligan, the fourth was found a bit later, who managed to muddy the waters by pointing out that the coins had differing chemical compositions. Simply put, one of the coins had traces of copper and lead, meaning it could be Roman in origin, but another had copper and silver, so it was not Roman but probably medieval. And the analysis of the third coin suggested it was a French denier, which indicated a Frankish coin dating possibly as far back as the late 7th century. So what was going on? The guys called numismatist, coin expert, Sandy Campbell to clear things up. Sandy didn't take long to reach his conclusions, he insisted two of the coins originated from the Roman Empire. One was over 1,000 years old, dating from about 100, 300 AD, but incredibly, he claimed the second was from the BC era. That makes this coin over 2,000 years old and most likely the oldest ever found on Oak Island. Sandy then threw a curve ball with another coin. This one was a little unfamiliar to him, but he reckoned it could be from India and probably dated from the 6th, to the 8th century AD. More ancient coins only deepened the Oak Island mystery. Over the years the guys have uncovered coins from all around the world, including England, Rome, Portugal, and even China, but India is something entirely new and adds a whole other equation to the Oak Island mystery. The fourth coin, Sandy said, was from Tudor period England, dating from the 1500s. He said it had a distinctive portcullis engraving, which was unmistakable. A portcullis is a heavy graded gate-like structure that adorned the front of English castles and was considered a symbol of strength and security. The motif can still be found today on English pennies. There was one more coin-related incident from last night's episode. Tony Sampson went for a dive off the northern shore of the island, ostensibly to look for signs of a dam that may have created the swamp, but he may have found another old coin instead. On the bottom of the sea floor, Tony came across a round object with a hole in the middle, which was very similar to the design of the Chinese coin found on the island in 2020. Unfortunately, rules and regulations state the guys need a permit to remove artifacts from the seabed, so the potential Chinese coin will have to stay there until the team can navigate through the bureaucracy. The early morning mist clung to the rocky shores of Oak Island like an ancient shroud, whispering tales of buried treasure. The sun's golden rays pierced through the fog, bathing the rugged coastline in a warm glow. On this quiet island off the coast of Nova Scotia, a mystery that has baffled treasure hunters for over two centuries, was about to take another dramatic turn. The Legina brothers, Rick and Marty, along with their dedicated team, had returned with renewed energy and sharpened focus. This time the island seemed ready to reveal one of its long-guarded secrets. The team had been here before, countless times, probing, digging, analyzing every scrap of evidence, every whisper of folklore, but today felt different. It was as though the island itself was alive, thrumming with a kind of anticipation. After months of preparation, they had devised a new strategy, more determined than ever to crack the enigma that has plagued them for years. The Money Pit, Smith's Cove, The Swamp, all these legendary sites have played host to their previous expeditions, yielding tantalizing clues but never quite delivering the big prize. 
but this time the discovery would send shivers down their spines. The day began with the usual hum of machinery as metal detectors and ground-penetrating radar swept methodically over a new area of interest, a spot they had meticulously mapped out based on new data and historical research. The mood was tense yet hopeful. Craig Tester and Gary Drayton, the team's metal detection experts, scanned the Earth, moving in wide arcs while Rick, Marty, and the others watched the monitors in the mobile command center, their eyes glued to every blip on the screen. Suddenly, the equipment gave off a sharp, insistent beep. Gary's eyes lit up as he called out, I've got something here. He knelt down, his trowel glinting in the sunlight as he carefully dug into the earth. The team crowded around, excitement building with each stroke of the trowel. Then there it was, a flash of dull yellow. Gary held up a small, weathered coin, its surface marred by time but unmistakably ancient. Now that's what I'm talking about, he exclaimed, rushing off the dirt to reveal more of the coin's details. Rick leaned in close, his face a mix of disbelief and exhilaration. The coin was thick, with faint engravings that hinted at its origin, likely from the 17th century, if not earlier. The discovery was just the beginning. As the hours passed, the ground gave up more of its secrets. Two more coins were found in quick succession, each one telling its own story of the past. The first was small, darkened by age, but with enough detail to suggest it was Spanish, possibly a piece of eight. The second was larger and more worn, but the faint outline of a fleur de lis was visible, hinting at a French connection. Each coin was a breadcrumb, leading the team closer to understanding the complex history of the island. Inside the command center, Marty pored over the newly found coins with researcher Doug Crowell. These aren't just random drops, Doug said, his voice tinged with excitement. They're clustered too closely together, suggesting they were either lost or deliberately buried in this area. The team exchanged knowing looks. If these coins were part of a keksh, what more could be hidden nearby? The next step was obvious. Expand the search area. The ground-penetrating radar revealed anomalies beneath the surface. Odd shapes and disturbances in the soil that didn't belong. With renewed determination, the team began excavating the area more extensively, the machinery groaning as it bit into the earth. Soon, more artifacts emerged, fragments of pottery, rusted males, and then, another coin. This one was particularly intriguing, as it was still lodged in what appeared to be a small, rotting leather pouch. The island's history seemed to be unfolding before their eyes. Every artifact was a clue, and the team was racing to piece together a timeline. Were these items linked to the original diggers, or had they been dropped by later explorers? Could they be part of a larger treasure, hidden deep within the island's treacherous underground vaults? As the sun began to dip below the horizon, casting long shadows across the dig site, the team paused to assess their progress. Rick gazed out over the water, his thoughts drifting back through centuries of legend. The tales of pirates, the Knights Templar, and the countless others who sought the treasure but left empty-handed. But today felt different. Today they had more than just a story, they had tangible evidence.